In this lesson, we will learn how to create Microsoft Access database, how to create a new table, and how to import external data into an existing table. When you open Microsoft Access, you will land at this page. This is called Backstage View. There is a whole range of template files available. You can make use of these files if you are interested in two, but we will learn how to create Access Database right from the scratch. To do that, click Blank Database. System will ask you to give a name. So for this database, let's say I give it a name as Test Database. It's going to be saved at this specific location, but if you are not happy with this location, you can click this small icon and you can select any other location where you would like to save this database. Once the location is selected, click Create. This is how Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Access looks like. Here at the top is the menu items. Underneath that is the ribbon. And onto the left-hand side here, this is called Navigation Pane. As we proceed through the course, you will see the other groups of objects will keep on appearing. Currently, we have tables. Next time, you'll find here queries, form reports, and others. So this is Microsoft Access table. By default, system will assign it name as table one, but we will save it with a different name. To save this table with a different name, right click on its name, click save, and give it a name. Let's say I give it a name as TBL first table and click OK. I'll explain later in the course why I'm using these initials as TBL with the, uh, with the name of the table. I'll use QRY with the name of a query. I'll use RPT with the name of report. And for the form, I will use FRM. So this is my table. Now, this table has two views. Currently, we are in data sheet view, but we can change it into design view. Every Microsoft Access object, which is a table, a query, a form, a report, is at its certain views. Table has two views. To see the other view, there are a couple of, view, couple of ways to do that. You can right click on the name of the table and it will allow you to change to either to design view and if you are in design view it will allow you to switch to the data sheet view similarly if you're not happy with this one you can go into the ribbon and you can click the first icon here in the ribbon make sure you have selected field tab and it will allow you to switch to data sheet view or to uh, the design view similarly there is a more handy way available and that is to the right bottom corner down underneath here you'll find there is a data sheet view and there is a design view. So to change it to, currently we are in data sheet view. To change it to design view, right click on the name and change to design view. This is where we will add field names and we will set their properties. When you create a new table, Microsoft Access will automatically create a new field for you and it will treat it as a primary key. We have already explained what is a primary key. Let's do one thing. We turn off this primary key indicator and we add few fields from our site. Let's say my first field is transaction date. It is advisable that while you are assigning the names or defining the names of the fields, make sure that you are not using any special characters or hyphens or spaces in between the names. I strongly recommend that if your field name is more than one word, first alphabet of every word, type it as uppercase and rest everything in lowercase. So that's make it more read, uh, readable. So my first field is transaction date. Second, I need to assign the data type. Now, in this transaction date, I'm going to store date only. So in the data type, click the drop down and select date and time. Now this date, in what form it will be stored? 
So for that, there are a couple of properties down over here. So let's say I'm going to format this field. So click into the format and you can click this drop down to check or to select what uh, format of the date you're going to follow. So we have over here short date format, we have medium date format, long date format. So let's say I select the short date format. If you want that when a new record is created in this table, the day the record is created, that specific date should be automatically added. So what you can do, you can set the default value field over here and you can add an expression or a formula which should pick up that specific date of the day. We will learn this, th these things a little bit later. So this is my first field. In case the field is not so clear, it's not so understandable. You can add a little bit of comments about the field over here, but this is an optional information. It's not required. Let's add a couple of more fields over here. Let's say my next field is first name and it's going to be short text. Short text mean it's going to be of 255 characters, not longer than that. Let me add a couple of more fields. I'm going to add, let's say, uh, last name. That's also a short text. I'm going to add quantity, which is going to be a number field. Now, as far as this number is concerned, I need to define here what sort of number is going to be this. What you can do is you can click onto the field size and you can select the appropriate uh, value from this uh, available options. If it's going to be a small number, you can select integer. If it's going to be a bigger number, you can select the double. But if you want more precision into the number, you can select the decimal. Let's say I'm going to select double number. At the same time, to format the number in this field, we can select the format, select the drop down, and I'm going to select the standard. So standard will add 1000 separator automatically. As far as the decimal places are concerned, if you want the decimal places, you can add those number of decimal places here. But if you don't want it, let's say I don't want these decimal places over here, I can select or I can enter zero. So zero means no decimal places. But if you want, you can enter one, two, three, as per your requirement. I'm going to add another field called units. And this field is, uh, let's say, that's also um, a number field. And I'm going to select this one also as double number. It's going to be a standard format. And I'm going to store this field uh, up to two decimal places. Now, before I continue, I will save this table. So to save the table, right click and click save. Let me add one last field over here and it's going to be, let's say, remarks. As far as this field is concerned, it's not going to store a very short value or small text. I want to store quite a big text into this one. So instead of selecting short text, you can select the data type here, the long text. Right click, save, and now, currently we are, or right now we are in design view. We can change it to data sheet view to, to see how our table look like. So either you can select from here, data sheet view, or right click, and then change to data sheet view, or you can go to the ribbon and you can select the data sheet view from here. So let's say right click and data sheet view. So this is how our table will look like. Let's add a couple of values into this or a couple of records into this one. So as far as first field is concerned, let me increase the size of this field. So you can see since this was a date field, calendar by default available. I can click this calendar to select the date. Let's say my date is 1st of May, 2020. Here is the first name, let's say Alex. It's the last name, let's say John. And I have a quantity, uh, let's say uh, 500 and a unit price at 20. While you are writing or while you are entering the data, you will see at the record level, your small pen will be shown over here, a pencil will be shown over here. This means that your record is in edit mode right now. But once you go and complete uh, the value uh, and move on to the next record, so this record is now complete completed or saved and now I'm into record number two. Down over here you can see the navigation buttons are there which will indicate at what record, uh, record you are now. 
So let's go ahead and add another record. I'm going to add a record, let's say, of 2nd of May. And the name over here is Ra, uh, Ryan, let's say. And let's say over here is Sohil. And we sold him, let's say, um, 1,000 uh, units at uh, 50 units, the dollar per unit. So this is how you can enter data into uh, any existing table. This is how to create tables from the scratch. We can also create tables by importing data directly into Microsoft Access and create new tables in the import process. To do that, in the menu items, select external data. Under that, in the import and link group, click new data source. And I'm going to import an Excel file. So file from, click Excel. In this dialog box, I need to select location of my file. So click browse, go to the folder or the location where your file is there and select the file and click open. Now, once your file is selected, you can decide, are you going to import data into a brand new table or you can import table, uh, uh, import data into an existing table and append the data copy directly into that. Or we will learn into the future how to link a file to an existing table. In this lesson, we are going to import data into a brand new table means we don't have that table where we need to import the information. So we are going to create this table in this import process. Okay, so once the file is selected, click OK. Now, my file that I want to import, it contains multiple sheets. So I'm going to import all those sheets one by one. So if the first sheet is selected here and down over here in the view, I can see that this is the type of data or this is the information which is into that specific sheet that I'm going to import. In this sheet now, right at the top, these are the column titles. Underneath that, this is the relevant data. So go ahead, click next. Now in my data, the first row contains the column titles. And this is what I'm going to use as my headers. To do that, make sure to check mark this small box and that first row will be automatically selected as the column headers. Click next. Now here, Microsoft Access will automatically assign certain data types based on its own intelligence. For example, when the first column it read, it find that the data in this one is something short text. If you are happy with this one, go ahead. And in case you are not happy with this, you, are, you want to assign a new data type or different data type, you can always select that specific column and select the data type you want to assign it to. But in my case, it has, uh, it has read everything correctly. This column, it contains short text, correct? This one is same thing. In this column, it's the num number, which it has assigned as a um, uh, double number data type. In this one also assigned a double number data type. So for the time being, we'll just go ahead with the default data types but what Microsoft Access has selected for us and click next. Now in this page, Microsoft Access has by default added an extra field here and has treated this field as the primary key. This field is not coming from the source file. If you want to assign a primary key and you're happy with what Microsoft Access has done, you can go ahead and click next. But let's say I already know that my this field, which is the country code, it is already a unique uh, field or a unique value in this field for every single record. So I don't want Microsoft Access to add a new field for me. So to avoid that, you can go ahead over here and select choose my own uh, primary key. Click the drop down so the fields which is coming from or the fields which are coming from the source file would be available. You can select which field you want to use as the primary key. Let's say I want to the primary key should be the country code. So the field which was added by the system that's gone from here. In certain situation, you may not assign or it's not it, it, it will not necessary that you must assign a primary key. If that is the case, you can select no primary key. 
But in this case, I do need to assign a primary key. So I select choose my own primary key and selected one of the uh, available fields from uh, the options available here and click next. So here I'm going to assign name to the table. So system has already by default selected name as country. I just add three alphabets before this. That's TBL countries, TBL stands for table over here and click finish. So system will import everything from the source file into a new table. Up to now, there is no new table added, but as soon as I click close, you will see here a new table with the name of TBL countries will be added. So click close. So here is our new table. If I double click this table, so my data is right up here. So this is how you can import external data into an existing table or into a new table. Let's do the same exercise one more time and import another sheet and create a new table uh, that we don't have right now. So let's create a new table uh, through the import process. So going back again to external data, click new data uh, source, click file from and click Excel. And I'm going to click browse, select the file that you want to import, click open. I'm not going to append the data into an existing table. I'm going to uh, import the data into a new table and click OK. This time I'm going to import data, let's say, of sales. Click Next. This is how the data will look like. Click Next. My first row will be considered as the heading row. Yes, that's right. Click Next. System by default has selected the data types. I'm happy with those data types that it assigned. Click Next. And then I don't need to assign any primary key over here. So let's select no primary key and click next. Going to assign the name to the table. Let's say name of the table is TBL sales and click finish. So system has imported another uh, data into my tables. Click close. So that table is down here. Now click this one, which is table sale. So here is your data. So this is one simple way of importing data from an external source and at the same time creating a table in Microsoft Access.